but you know they are out there and these people actually choose to disable themselves i can only imagine how insulting that is to people who are actually disabled let's sip some tea today guys hello my beautiful internet friends and welcome back i am very excited and also just a tiny bit nervous for today's video i don't generally respond to other youtubers but this was a video i felt was just necessary to say something about You may or may not know who Blair White is. Oh, hi, welcome back to my channel. She is a conservative, outspoken, transgender YouTuber. I've seen a number of her videos. We disagree on a lot, we agree on a few things. And I saw this video pop up and I was like, oh goodness, this is one that I need to say something about because she spoke about the transabled community. We will be talking about the transabled community. Oh God, I just, my soul. <laughs> decaying. So basically these people disable themselves. They will cut off their own limbs. They will blind themselves. They will disable themselves because they feel as though that is the life they should be living. If you don't know what the transabled community is, it also relates to BIID, which I will talk about in a moment. But essentially, if someone identifies as transabled, they have a physically perfectly functional body, but they identify as disabled. So for instance, someone may have eyes that can see perfectly well, but believes that they should be blind, and that is how they choose to live. Going blind would be a nightmare, but for Jewel Chuping, it was the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. She suffers from a rare condition called body integrity identity disorder, which led her to deliberately take her own sight. Or maybe they have perfectly functioning limbs, but believe those limbs should not work below the waist. And so they live in a wheelchair and they do not use their legs because that's how they believe they are meant to live life. In terms of pretending, I try to do it at least once a day, if not longer. I feel a lot better and I get to see myself as I would be or should be. If you are new to my channel, I just wanna give you a quick little bit of context. I am an amputee. I lost my leg below the knee about a year, a year and a half ago, year and a few months ago. There's the receipts, guys. The whole journey of how it happened and what's going on with it is documented on this channel, so I won't bore you with it right now, but suffice it to say, I fell off a horse when I was 13, shattered my ankle. So many surgeries later, eventually we made the call that it wasn't worth it to keep my very painful and messed up ankle around anymore, and we had to remove it. Not a great experience, not one that I would choose in a perfect world ever. However, this is where we are now, and I'm making the best of it. With that being said, Blair White made a video, like I said, about transabled community and BIID. And she mentioned a couple times how she feels like people who are actually disabled, such as myself, should be really offended or are going to be really offended by people who identify this way or are dealing with this disorder. And I wanted to add a little bit of insight, add a little bit of context as someone who is actually, who is actually disabled, right? Here are a few of the things that she had to say in her video. You know, I can only imagine how terrible it is to either be born with or develop any sort of physical or mental disability um, and then you have this segment of the population which is very small we're not acting like this is a voting block people but you know they are out there and these people actually choose to disable themselves I can only imagine how insulting that is to people who are actually disabled not by choice and some of them still have their legs but they choose to not use them because apparently being able-bodied makes you privileged and they don't want to you know I just You know, I welcome the apocalypse at this point. I feel like, you know, this little thing called humanity has definitely run its course. So this woman's name is actually Chloe White. Um, we're gonna hope she's not related to me. I don't really wanna be from that particular gene pool. Uh, she actually wears leg braces to give herself a paraplegic feel. How insulting if you're really a paraplegic. Like, I kind of want to fight her. Now, let me start at the beginning of this story. First of all, I have done a video about this before that I will link up above here and also down below, but I'm not gonna lie and tell you that I was not initially offended when I heard about this. I will go ahead and use the big O, offended. I was absolutely like, what the hell? Are you, are you kidding me? People do this, people want this, people choose this life? Like what? That is, it, it is seemingly offensive. It seems to make light 
of the genuine struggles that myself and people who are similar to me are going through. It almost seems to make a joke out of it, right? On the surface. And I think that that's why it's so easy to be outraged about it. And so when I first heard about this through like Buzzfeed articles on Facebook, uh, my honest reaction was WTF. So Blair, you and I had a similar initial reaction, but let's dive a little bit further into this. This whole topic stuck in my head. Understandably, it's something that I would care about because it's my life and it was so perplexing to me that people would be choosing this. I'm gonna put that in quotes. So I looked into it further. And as I was looking into it further, I'd get messages from people as I started this channel who had BIID and they'd reach out to me and want to have a conversation with me because they believe that they should be amputees as well and I am an amputee so they wanted to talk to me and it was confusing and different but I, I wanted to hear their story, I wanted to kind of keep an open mind and then as I continued my research I discovered just as Blair did that BIID which is Body Identity Integrity Disorder is an actual disorder. The more I thought about this the less offended I got because I can't imagine how much someone must be mentally hurting to like completely optionally want to hurt themselves so badly as to disable a part of their body for the rest of their life. By injecting medical grade alcohol into the limb but there was intense pain. There was a sense of feeling of success. You couldn't move it but after eight hours it was fine. I was in a very dark place and it culminated in me trying to jump in front of a train. And the more stories I heard and the more videos I watched and the more that I read, the more I felt like my heart was breaking for people dealing with this. I went blind on purpose, but I don't feel it was a choice. And when I made that video about BIID, you know, commenting from an actual amputee's perspective, so many people reached out to me who are dealing with this disorder and thanked me for talking about it. Um, in at least a compassionate way because no one has done that to them before and has just treated them like complete weirdos and outcasts and like they're totally fucked up. To feel was the sense of isolation and alienation. Not being able to talk to anyone, constantly having to put on a mask. And I'm not an expert on BAID, but all I can say is from the people I have spoken to, they don't want to be dealing with this. They don't want to feel this way. They are hurting. They want a solution. They want a fix. They are often looking for treatment, but this is how they legitimately feel for whatever reason. And I, I really think that more research needs to be supported when it comes to this kind of a disorder and that better support needs to be offered when it comes to this. The next thing that Blair addresses in her video is the idea of, you know, is being trans disabled similar to being transgender? Now let's talk about is this similar to being a transgender? If you're new to this channel, hi, I'm a tranny. So my initial reaction to this would be that being transgender and transitioning and changing my body was actually to improve the functionality of my life, improve my quality of life for which it did, not take away functionality or disable myself. This is something I cannot provide a lot of commentary on because I am neither transgender nor transabled. However, again, from the conversations I've had with people, they do want to transition to transabled or disable themselves in whatever way they feel like they need to, to improve their quality of life. Much the same way that someone who is transgender transitions to physically appear as the gender that they truly are, you know, inside. From the feelings that these people have expressed to me, it is somewhat similar. Again, I am not speaking as an expert on that at all. However, I think that maybe our mindsets could shift a little bit from what the fuck is wrong with these people to something is obviously going on. Maybe this deserves a little bit of compassion and how can we help? And Blair actually does touch on that in her video. So what's interesting is this, according to this, it actually occurs in childhood similar to gender dysphoria. I had never even heard of this. I thought these people were just flat out crazy. I didn't, I didn't know that there was like a, you know, a condition associated with this and actually is a bit of a, um, sad thing to think about if you're born with this. It is really sad. I have personally had the privilege of never feeling like something physically in me was so wrong or shouldn't be there for most of my life for any reason. But unfortunately, a lot of people have. I don't know what that feels like, but it sounds kind of heartbreaking. But there was one thing that I wanted to point out that I think is incorrect 
in her video the way that she presented it. She puts up a Tumblr post, which I think we all know Tumblr is like the bane of the world, the bane of existence itself, and it reads like this. This person says, my experience as a transabled. People have always been very rude to me about being transabled. It's not that hard to understand. I just think able-bodied people are privileged and I've decided that I was way too privileged. So I decided to stop using my legs to remove ableism. Yeah, that sounds absolutely ridiculous to me as well. And I think that is very different from what people are expressing who are dealing with body identity integrity disorder. That is different. That is not simply wanting to identify a certain way because you feel like other people are too privileged, which by the way, privilege is not a bad thing. If you have privilege, use it to help other people. Because apparently being able-bodied makes you privileged. For the record, being able-bodied does make you privileged, but that is not a bad thing. That's a great thing. If you are an able-bodied person, use that privilege to help people who are not. If you are a person who has privilege because of the color of your skin, use that privilege to help people who do not look the same as you, who may be disadvantaged in certain ways, which is not right. Privilege is not bad, and yet we demonize it in this society like it's this curse word. It's not, it's a good thing to have, but it should be shared. Like we should use the good power that we have to help other people. So yeah, I think that this post is absolutely ridiculous and I don't think it's a good representation of being transabled. And I'm not even really sure that a lot of people struggling with BIID identify as transabled. I haven't done all the research, but again, from the people I've talked to, no one has ever self-identified that way. Like I said, I am an amputee. Before that, I lived a restricted life where I was in physical pain all the time. I could never really do the things I wanted to do. My ankle was really screwed up. On top of that, I have other medical conditions I'm dealing with. All of those would be really great if they just disappeared and went away. I don't enjoy any of it. And yes, my initial feeling was offense when I heard about these people, but the more I looked into it, the more I realized that they are hurting people struggling. I deal with depression and anxiety and PTSD. Those are mental conditions that I would love to wish away. I've tried, I've really tried, I've tried many a time, but they don't just disappear, they don't just go away. They take time and compassion and treatment, and I believe that the same is true for people who are dealing with BIID. We already established that's a whole other level of like, However you find yourself reacting to this, that's A-OK. -okay. But how you treat people who are dealing with this, I personally think could use more compassion. Us humans were programmed with survival instincts, right? And part of that is wanting to keep a hold of all of our body parts as a way to survive, you know? So to have something in your brain that makes you go so far against that as to be like, no, I don't want any part of this, alludes to the idea that something is really not okay, whatever that not okay is. And I really hope that if you are watching this and you are dealing with the IID, that you find support, that you find compassionate people who are willing to listen and help you find a way to work through it or live with it or whatever, whatever the answer is. I certainly don't have an answer. I hope that more research is thrown into this to help people struggling with this. I hope that we can all express more understanding and less judgment. I get why Blair made the video that she made. I totally understand that is her flavor of YouTube. I get it. But also, I noticed that more people were visiting my first BIID video that I made nine months ago, probably because her video is huge. She's a really, really big person on this platform and a lot of people listen to her. And so I wanted to throw in my two cents as a person who is disabled, as a person who is an amputee, and say that I am not the least bit offended anymore by this disorder. I think it's absolutely natural to have a hard time understanding this. I have a hard time understanding this. It was hard to wrap my head around. If that is the position you're in, I think that's entirely understandable and normal. However, as I often say, I think our world could use a lot more compassion. And so maybe reconsider your initial reaction, examine it, and see if there's more that you could learn. And Blair, if you're ever watching this, which I, you know, sincerely doubt, but hey, I appreciate you covering this topic. And if you ever get a chance, maybe spend some time talking to people who have BIID to better understand where they're coming from. That's the only recommendation that I would have. It's something that has personally helped me try to better understand what someone is experiencing that I have no experience in. Yeah, so there you go. Those are my thoughts. Thank you guys for listening. A huge thank you to all of my patrons who make these videos 
sincerely possible. You help me more than you know, and to you, watching this video right at this moment. I appreciate you. Thank you for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me. You could be anywhere in the world doing anything, but you chose to, oops, I just knocked the camera. Okay. You chose to spend it here with me and I am grateful. Thank you. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Have her from the sky.